So this is my painting from Saturday's class, and it was my demonstration. I worked on it about 30 minutes, so now I'm going to come back and do step two so you guys can see how that goes. And I'm going to start with the light on the bridge because that's my center of interest, I guess. I mean, it just has to be. And also, it's really, it's one of the very lightest lights, so I want to go ahead and get that in. I did spend some time building up these darks, so now I think I'm ready to go ahead and get a little lighter. Um, I don't have a ton of colors in acrylics. Um, I'll show you what I do have. So I don't use, I, I, this is called a prismatic palette, which means I'm just using the primary and secondary colors, um, which would be yellow, red, blue. Those are the primary colors. They're the ones you can't mix. Uh, to get to make. You have to have them or you can't make them. And then the secondary colors are the ones that you mix by mixing the primary colors. Um, so that would be orange, green, and purple. And so what that means, if you're just using a prismatic palette, I, the only brown I have is this yellow ochre. So to make grays and things, I need to just know a little bit about color mixing, not a ton. And all I need to know is that um, if you mix your three primary colors together in different combinations, you can make grays or browns. So um, that's not a tremendous amount. So if you're mixing, say, um, red, yellow, and blue together, and you feel like it's too reddish, well then add more yellow and blue to it. Um, so you don't even have to think about like mixing complementary colors together, but that's another way to think about what you're doing of how to mix grays and browns is by mixing your complementary colors. Um, and the complementary colors are the ones that are opposite on the color wheel. And those are purple and yellow, orange and blue, or um, red and green. But like I say, that's basically the same as mixing up, um, mixing up any of your, the three primary colors. So just, Kind of make it simple for yourself um, and if you need to write that down the primary colors and the secondary colors you know that's that's okay i'm not um, particularly interested in color theory i just try to go out and paint what i see um, that's a more impressionistic way of painting so here i just i got those all in lighter um, i know they're not exactly the right color yet but i don't even care about that very much because the thing is, the more times I have to try, the more paint I build up and the more um, paint quality I have. I had been wondering if you can do, um, so like that's that's a little better. This is the nice thing about acrylics is I can come right back over this. And you can with oils too, if you're um, willing to just make a, like a, a real brush stroke and then just leave it and not fuss with it. And then I'm going to come back and I'll put more darks in that later to define some of those rocks a little better. But for now, I'm just... Um... So I, I basically added more purple to my yellow to make that a more um, gray color. And so what I, I try to do with every color, it's really the easiest with the neutral colors like grays and browns, is I try to ask myself what kind of a gray is it? Is it a bluish gray, a violet gray, a yellow gray? And I do the same thing with all my other colors as well. I ask myself, what kind of green is it? Is it a super yellowy green? Like this would probably be our most yellow green. Is it a slightly bluer green? What kind of green is it? So let's just say, um, let's just start with this, the most yellow green. And I'm just gonna put some real yellow on there. I'm going to add a little white because that makes it more opaque and it'll stand out better. And I can keep using that little smearing stroke I was using before, or I can, like I prefer to work in a kind of a brush stroke technique, but you don't have to. There's all kinds of techniques you can do. You can scumble right to the end, which is this little smeary stroke. You can do things like, um, you can use different techniques in different parts of your painting. 
Um, so when I get to the trees, I'll show you a different way, a different technique you can use. Um, so here's this grass, which is not quite as yellow as the trees. And all I'm thinking about doing here is making it better. I'm not really thinking about finishing. It's just, it's my second lay-in. And I just, just want to make it better. Um, you know, maybe if I had more expensive, um, maybe I'm sure if I had more expensive um, acrylics, that they would cover better. And I'm, I'm just gonna keep trying different brands. Um, the next thing I'm gonna try is the Golden bot, Full Body or something. Um, acrylics, they, they have, supposedly, they're a little more like oil paints. All right, so then for my trees, if you want, there's a, it's just kind of a padding stroke. And I'm not like really mixing the paint up too much on my um, on my canvas. I'm not at all right now. I'm just grabbing colors and putting them in there. And you can do this right to the end, this little pat technique. And the thing that's kind of nice about it is like getting good color and good brush strokes and everything else is hard. It takes, you know, practice. And this is a way to have kind of a nice texture and stuff, but without having to you know, be like a painter like John Singer Sargent or one of those other people that was so good at brush strokes. So, so the scumbling method, you can carry through clear to the end. You could do like this, where some places you scumble, some places you do this pity pat, we used to call it, or in some places you do more descriptive brush strokes, brush strokes with the form, like the, um, like the arch. So the thing is also just don't even like think about making it perfect. You know, there's, there's, it's hopeless. You can't make it perfect. So just keep thinking about making it better and just ask yourself all the time that question, is it better or worse, better or worse? And um, that's kind of how I know when I'm finished with a painting, when I start hearing, I start saying to myself, worse, worse, worse. Now, I uh, photoshopped a couple of pictures together here. This is not how the scene looked exactly uh, when I was out there painting it. And this is maybe how it might have looked a few weeks ago or a week ago when the uh, azaleas were blooming. But I just, um, I went ahead and, um, and added some flowers into it. And, uh, you know, eventually I want to try to create more depth right through here, but I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking about that too much. But even though this is my brightest yellow, I may not want that to be so yellow because <coughs> yellow is a color that really comes forward um, and doesn't, want, doesn't stay in the distance very well. So, and probably I've got that a little too dark, so I'm going to lighten that up too. And I'm maybe spending a little more time in each of these areas than I did the first time over, but not a tremendous amount. It's just like, make it better, move on. All right, so now um, this flower situation. A couple of colors that if you don't have, um, it's really hard to do flowers without them. And the first one is dioxazine purple. Um, and I'm just gonna... And also something like Rose Matter, Rose Lake, sometimes they call it Permanent Rose, Wanadictrum Rose. I mix just those two colors in white together to get my, my flowers. The thing about the um, Permanent Rose is a cool red. So it, um, like you can't make a pink very well with a cadmium red or a, a barium red. So you need some warm reds, which are the cads, cadmiums, and then you need a cool red, which is this rose matter. And then I don't know how I'd survive without my purple. Probably couldn't. <laughs> it's just hard to make a decent purple. Um, and especially it's hard with paints that aren't that great. I just got these at Jerry's. 
and you know they're okay they're not too bad they were I think three dollars a tube this is a four ounce tube and they are called creative inspiration all right so now I just want to um, see if I can get those lavender flowers up there if this was oils, I might have done the flowers the very first thing, just so I didn't get any green in them. Um, just so I could keep my brush really clean. Usually when I'm painting in oils, when I come back the next time over, I'll start with the lightest color in my picture, and then I work to the darkest color. And that way, um, that way, I, my brush, you know, I just am painting with this one brush and um, I don't even wash it that much, honestly. But um, I just do whatever I have to do to keep my paint really clean. So if I need to wash my brush more often than I will, in oils, I, I know I, brush, I wash my brush more than I do in these acrylics. Just whatever it takes to keep your colors nice and clean and bright, that's what you wanna do. Okay, so now I want to add some darks to this. Um, oh, well, I got my tree too, so maybe I should add some darks. So good, I'm going to try this for the tree. I'm going to mix purple and orange. To make a brown. And I just, um, there's funny things that we learn when we're kids. And one of those things seems to be that tree trunks are brown. So I just... I want you to take a second look and you'll find now I'm adding some blue. Um, tree trunks are really more um, gray usually than brown. So just look, don't assume you know, and especially don't assume you know like from things you did when you were a kid. Because I, I don't know what the deal is with that exactly, but it seems like the things we did as we were when we were kids, we have this tendency to, I do anyway, not really look at what's there just do what I remember. And one thing about Impressionism is that you're always trying to do what you see, not what you know. Okay, and then I'm just gonna, I've got my little purpley mixture and I'm just adding more blue to it now. And I'm gonna come in here and um, just start and see where the, okay, so I know which rock that is, luckily. So this rock is gonna make a shadow right there. And I'm mostly painting with those um, paints I told you about, the uh, ones that are uh, open. They're golden open, and they dry a little slower. And you can see it's, it's not completely dry here. So I, the other ones are not the open ones, and I, I get what started bugging me with just the open ones is it didn't actually dry fast enough. So I wanted something that I could work right back over and not have it get muddy. So when you're painting outdoors on a sunny day, you have two light sources and one light source is the sky, which is blue, and that's what lights up all your shadows. So on a sunny day, not to make a rule, we try not to make rules about stuff, but on a sunny day, the, the shadows tend to be more blue. And then because the sun itself is yellow, the lights tend to be more yellowy. So if you're out painting and you're like, oh, I cannot make this look like a sunny day. Well, maybe you need more, try, you could try more yellows in your lights and more blues in your shadows. But you always wanna look first, not just assume you know. Uh, memory is a very, kind of a weird thing and you don't wanna you don't want to get too caught up on that. So like I'd say all my shadows are a little on the purple side right now. So I'm going to try to add, I'm going to see if I can mix up a little more of a gray. And so I'm just, I don't know, I'm just adding kind of a lot of stuff. <laughs> I want to make that a little bluer. So once I've got these shadows in, you know, I'll let them dry a little bit and then I can come back and put the lights on top again. And I don't have an order that I usually do lights and darks in. I, I, like, I, I felt like I really needed to make my lights lighter just now, so I went ahead and did them first. Um, but, um, yeah, and I want to try to show this. So how am I going to do that? I think this, 
This needs to be a little wider out here. I want to show that ring of light inside that there's light on the face, but there's also light a little bit on the inside of that ring. So I'm just going to, and I'm not, I'm not copying the rocks. I'm not like stand, sitting here cop, counting or something, but I am trying to look at individual ones because if I don't, there's a real tendency just to do this. Da, 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 da. It's a tendency everyone has. So it's a tendency that one has to fight because things are really just not that repetitive. So anytime you find yourself making a little like fence or a ladder, then you wanna take a harder look, another look, and um, see if you can make things more like they really are. Okay, so um, I'm gonna see if what I can do with my lights again on my rocks. And I've got my lavender and my yellow ochre to do that. That's kind of hard, but it's hard because I don't perceive a color change between this this little part that's in here. So I'm just gonna the little part that's on the inside of the just gonna start with that and kind of you know my dark is still really wet, so I'm just gonna. Maybe just help myself remember that that's where I'm headed. I guess it's a little lighter on the inside, maybe. Other problem I've really been having with acrylics painting outside is they just dry so fast, especially if you're set up in the sun. So um, it's, it's, it's better in here, but um, in my studio. But I, I did get a little squirt bottle. So the other thing I thought it might be, maybe would help me to make this look like a turn, a curve, was to have my strokes go a different direction. All right, so now come back over here. And I definitely want the, the lights on my rocks to be the last thing I do. So if I have to come back and do shadows again, I will, um, obviously. <laughs> But in the end, I want to come back and do rocks last because what I want in the end is I want the things that are closest to me, which is the face, the outside, the closest edge of the rocks, the, the edge that's farthest away from the inside part here. I want to be sure that that paint is actually literally on top so that the paint is actually closer to me. And especially, I'm gonna put a little bit of that rock wall over there just to make sure it looks like it continues behind that tree even though I don't see it. I try, I try not to have things in behind something else. Um, okay, so I don't want that. And I need more light on my ground here. Love the stappled sunlight. And I want to make sure, like, okay, if I have light here, I want there to be light coming right here onto here onto the path and I have some light there and there so I'm going to have light coming in from here well okay <laughs> all right so now I'm going to go back and make some more darks and path seems a little pinker than the wall so And I'm making my strokes pretty deliberately horizontal here because I want to keep this as a flat plane. All right. Um, okay, so I this is really similar, but I'm going to lighten this up a little bit under here because I want that to go back more. I want there to be more space um, between the bridge and the background. So see, just by lightening that up a little bit, that helps that bridge pop forward. And then even though it's lighter up here, I, I mean the bridge itself is lighter up here, I'm going to make that a little lighter back in there too. And I, I think I want to try to get rid of that little 
too much yellow back there. Yeah, I wonder, maybe I should put some flowers back here too. I think they're, well, they did used to be flowers. Another um, kind of a hallmark of a sunny day or a thing that you usually see on a sunny day is that there's very strong value contrast between the lights and the darks. All right, and I put that, I'm gonna put, I put a little bit of that there, so I just wanna bring that in there too. So the next thing I would do is, um, well, I'd have to get out more paint to keep working, so I'm going to quit. But So that's the next step, step two, second time over, and then I'll, I, I'll film a third, a third time over and maybe I'll use oil paints on top because I really think that's the way to go with these acrylics, not just finish paintings in acrylic. <laughs> 